and they all lived happily ever after. The end. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Good evening, Broxburn. I'm Mr. Cowan, one of the class teachers here at Broxburn Primary School. And at the moment in Broxburn Primary School, we're really trying to create a reading culture with our young learners. And the one of the ways that we're doing that is with an initiative that we're calling Bedtime Read. Uh, sadly, bedtime stories and bedtime reading is on a bit of a decrease at the moment for a lot of uh, young children. So we're really trying to get that practice back into homes as much as possible. And one of the ways that we're doing that is with, initi with this initiative of bedtime reading and just looking at the idea of telling stories, reading stories, maybe even creating your own stories. And just looking at a few hints and tips on how to make those stories as exciting as possible. Bedtime reading is an absolutely fantastic thing for loads of children and it has a huge number of benefits uh, for those children when it comes to creating that reading culture. It creates a really strong bond with your children as well, if that's a ritual that you do every night or regularly whenever you get a chance. Uh, and it really creates a huge love of reading for children, having those experiences at an early age. And it also has a really great benefit in building up their vocabulary. If they're experiencing lots of different stories and being exposed to lots of different words that they might not usually uh, meet in their day-to-day -day lives. Any children that maybe struggle to just get settled before bedtime, it's also a really great thing for them. Just having that routine of the same thing every night of just getting settled, hearing a story and getting ready for sleep is a really beneficial thing for uh, so many children. It also creates really good lifelong love of reading by having those really positive experiences at an early age and just gives them good memories about having a book, having a good story, maybe even having a talk about it and just really having those enjoy enjoyable experiences early on. It's a super thing for, for reading and it shows them that reading is important. Reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body and we really want all of our young learners here at Broxham Primary School to have good healthy minds. So, we're going to take a little look at how you might like to create your own stories when it comes to bedtime reading, and whether you're telling your own story or reading a story from a storybook, how to make it a really exciting read for your children. Right, so a lot of our children in the school are taking home story dice this week. Um, some of our uh, P1s, 2s and 3s uh, have got uh, cubes in their book bags and the P4s are taking home story cubes that they can make as well. But these story cubes, although they're helpful, they're not completely necessary for making up your own story. So here on the board I've got seven features of a fairy tale. Now, it doesn't always have to be a fairy tale, you can have lots of different types of stories like this, but these are really useful tools for creating your own story. And you'll actually see a lot of the stories that you know already actually use a lot of these things. So, most of these stories have got a hero, a villain, a setting, an object, an obstacle, a happy ending, and a lesson. Okay, you could use lots of uh, fairy tales that, that you know about and they'll fit into uh, this template quite easily. Um, so what we are using our story dice for is rolling them and seeing what objects come up. Then we take those objects and we try and put them into one of our uh, features of a story here. So we rolled our story dice earlier and we got three objects that we wanted to use. Um, rolling seven objects can sometimes make it a bit difficult to fill all of them in. So you could just do it two or three or more times put them in where you want to, and then see what story that begins to lend itself to. So, what were the three things that we rolled earlier? Um, the hero is going to be a squirrel, and the bad guy was going to be a dragon. Yep, so we had a dragon on our story dice, so we thought that that would probably be a good villain to have a dragon. So we'll put that up here. And the hero is a squirrel. Mm -hmm. What do we think for our setting? What are we going to have for that? A we were going to have the forest of the big wood that was on the, um, the dice there. So we said the big wood was going to be our setting and an object. What was our object going to be? A chest. It was a treasure chest. So we'll put that up as well. The treasure chest. Okay, so these can be any, these can go in any places that you want. We just thought those would be the best ones fitting in for there. We thought dragon, that's quite a usual villain sort of type. Uh, the wood or the forest, uh, we felt that quite, fitted quite nicely for the, the setting. And the object, uh, we felt like that was a good one for the treasure chest. Now, most of these stories will usually start with the main character or a hero. Uh, a villain may not be revealed until later on in the story, but usually this hero is trying to do something. The whole point of the story is that there's an, an obstacle or a problem that they're trying to solve. 
So that's usually one that you can figure out once you find out what the object is. So we said that our hero, that was one that we just filled in ourselves, we thought it could be a little squirrel, that could be our hero of the story, the main character. They were looking for the key for their treasure chest. So that was the problem. Their obstacle to get past was finding the key to their treasure chest. And we thought the dragon had probably stolen it. We thought that would that'd be quite a good problem to have. Okay, happy ending. We usually want our stories to end happily, although not all of them do. And lastly, a lesson is something that is uh, present in quite a lot of different stories, fairy tales or other types of stories, a lesson to, to learn by the end. And it's usually figured out by the main character, maybe doing something they shouldn't have been doing when the problem started, when the obstacle uh, became apparent. So usually that lesson would then be um, not to do that thing, whatever they were doing. So for example, Red Riding Hood went off the path and that's when she found the wolf. Uh, that's when, uh, so the lesson is, don't go off the path, things like that. And the three little pigs, they, um, two of them lost their houses because they didn't build their houses out of the right stuff. So their lesson would maybe be, um, work hard and do your job properly. So lessons can come out of anything. So we want to try and put all this together to come up with our story. So we were thinking we had our hero, the squirrel, lost the key to the treasure chest. Uh, he lost it when he was walking in the woods. We thought the dragon had stolen it. Our obstacle or our problem was him getting it back now from the dragon's cave, we thought. He thought that'd be a good place for a dragon to be. The happy ending, hopefully he's going to get the, the key back. And the lesson is, well, if the squirrel was walking too far through the wood where he wasn't supposed to, then the lesson would be not to go where you're not supposed to. So, now that we've got all of those things together, let's put it together in a story and see how we can make that a particularly exciting story to tell to the kids, okay? Okay, so now that we've got together all of our features of a story, we've used our story cubes to come up with some ideas, we've filled in the rest with what we think would make a good story, and now we can start telling it. So, as all many good stories start, once upon a time, there was a little squirrel that lived in the wood. He lived in the wood with his squirrel mum and his squirrel dad. Now, they didn't have a lot in their little squirrel house. They weren't a very rich family. But our young squirrel had one thing that was very precious to him. It was his treasure chest. Now, it was just a che treasure chest, he called it. It wasn't really a treasure chest, but it was full of treasures to him. It was full of his favourite acorn he found in the wood the summer before. It was filled with the nicest flowers that he picked during that spring. And it was filled with all the things that he really held dear. Now, he knew it was a very precious treasure chest, so he needed a key to keep it closed. So every night before bedtime, he would lock it up, and he would keep that key on the little necklace that he held around his neck. Now, one morning he was going out looking for a new treasure to put into his treasure chest. So he said to his mummy squirrel and his daddy squirrel, Goodbye mummy, goodbye daddy, I'm off out to the forest. And his mum and dad said to him what they always said when he went out to the forest. Don't go past the great oak tree. And he said what he always said, okay, mum, okay, dad. He'd heard that a thousand times. So he knew not to go past there. So he went out of his little hole in this tree, scampered down the woods, and started running around the forest looking for any treasure that he could find. Now, this was a beautiful summer's day. It was hot, it was warm, there was birds chirping, there was wind blowing through the trees. And what would that have sounded like? Chirping birds and wind blowing. Especially with younger children, putting sound effects into a story can be a really great way of getting them involved in the story as well, and creating a really good atmosphere for the story. So he ran through the forest, ducking and diving between all the different trees, scampering up to the tall ones to see the best view of all the wood, scampering down to see what he could see on the forest floor. And he picked a few nice flowers, he found some pretty looking stones, he found a pretty big acorn he'd never really seen before, one quite that big. But he started gathering these things up, and before he realised it, he'd gone a bit further than he expected to. He looked up and he saw, oh, there it is, there's the great big oak tree, the tree I know not to go past. But he was feeling particularly brave today, and he looked down at what he'd got for his treasure chest and said, well, I've already got an acorn, and I've already got flowers. Maybe there's something a little bit more special, just a little bit further on. So he decided, I'll leave these here by the big great oak tree. I know where it is, so I'll find these later. And I'll just see what I find just a little bit further. Mum and Dad will never know that I've gone just a little bit further. So he scampered a little bit further on, and a little bit further on as well. And he saw a flower he had never seen before. It was an orchid. It was the most beautiful colours of purple and pink. And he thought, I don't have any flowers like that near my tree. 
That is definitely going to take place in my treasure chest. But to get to it, it was just over a little stream that he'd seen it. So he found the rocks to jump on to get over to the other side. He jumped on one, he jumped on another. He had one more to jump on that was a bit far away, but he thought, if I take a big run up, I can do it. He ran and he jumped over, he went into a tumble, but he was okay. And there was the great big work. He picked it up, held it with his tail and thought, now I've got it. I've only gone a little bit far away, time to go back. So he scattered back over the, uh, all the sticks, got back to the oak tree and thought, I don't need any of these old things now that I've got my orchid. So he ran back all the way to his house, scampered up the tree, into his hole, and that was in the hole. And he got this beautiful orchid now to put in his treasure chest. That's exactly where I'm going to put it, he thought. So he went into his room, under his bed, pulled it out, went to take his key, but oh, it wasn't there. His key was missing. He thought, where could it have gone? It didn't fall off when I was climbing up the tree. It didn't fall off when I was... It must have fallen off when I went over the stream, when I went into that tumble. And he thought, oh, if only I'd listened to mum and dad, I wouldn't have lost my key. Oh, well, I'll need to go back and get it, won't I? I can't leave all my precious things in this treasure chest, not be able to get in it. So he left his orchid just next to it and thought, I'll go out and get it quickly because it's getting dark now. So he ran out of his little hole, down the tree trunk, into the brush, into the bushes, ran around, and it took him a little bit of time to find it. Eventually he found the same oak tree, and then the same stream just on the other side. He scampered over the rocks, over onto the other side, went into a tumble, and then he was back where he lost his key. So he thought, it must be here somewhere. He had a look around, but he couldn't see it anywhere. I thought, that's very unusual, this is definitely where I went into my tumble. Then he heard a strange sound that he'd never heard near his home before. He'd never heard on the right side of the oak tree. It was a big, deep growl. Can you give me a big, deep growl? <laughs> exactly like that. And then he smelled a smell that he'd never really smelled around his house as well, or near the big oak tree. It was a kind of smoky smell. And he could, thought you could smell the smell of singed leaves as well. That there was something on fire around him. And then he looked up and he saw something he had never seen before. Two great big wings stretched out over the trees, flapping with a big booming sound. How would that sound? Boom, 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 boom. Something he had never seen before. It was a mighty dragon. He looked up and in his amazement, he saw just around the ankle of the dragon was his key on his necklace held onto by that dragon's big mighty foot and he thought oh my goodness there's my key he's stolen it what am i going to do now he thought to himself i've been brave and i've come this far if i can just be a little bit more brave maybe i can follow this dragon and find out where my key is so although the squirrel was very very small he was also very stealthy so he could crawl through all the different trees along the branches along the treetops and he thought the dragon wouldn't be able to see me so he scampered along the treetops, along the branches, following the dragon flying through the sky. And eventually, he got to the top of a big mountain. And at the top of this big mountain was a great big cave. And he thought, well, if I know anything about dragons, they live in caves and they like to keep lots of shiny treasure. So that's where it must be. So he scampered up the treetops, along the branches, onto the top of the mountain and found the entrance to this cave. He walked slowly in and all of a sudden he wasn't feeling so brave as he heard the growling coming from inside. How did it sound? <coughs> it was coming deep from in the cave but he knew he had to keep on going to get his treasured possession, his key. So he kept on crawling, kept on crawling and then he saw the dragon. This time asleep on top of his treasure. What a wealth of gold and coins and beautiful things he was sitting on. But he saw around his ankle kept that little key on the little chain. So he went very slowly, keeping himself low to the ground, keeping his tail low to the ground. So even if the dragon woke up, he wouldn't be able to see him. He hoped. He crawled a bit further and right up to the dragon's ankle, there was the key. He thought, I'm not gonna be able to get it off this mighty dragon's foot without waking him, but maybe I can nibble through my necklace a little bit and break the necklace. And squirrels are very good at nibbling. It's what they do. So nibble, nibble, nibble. Nibble, 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 eventually it broke and off came the key. So he went to pick it up, but he was so nervous and his hands were shaking. 
He dropped it, it fell to the stone floor and made a great clank, clank, clank. And at that moment, what do you think he heard? The dragon. The dragon was awoken. So he took one look at the dragon, one look at his key, and thought, now's my chance. I've got to take it and run. So he grabbed his key and he scampered out of the cave, down the mountain, onto the treetops, and decided to get back to his house as soon as he could. So along the branches, down the tree trunk, over the river, past the great mighty oak tree, and all the way back into his house, where he scampered up and finally into his bedroom. And he knew that he had come far too close than he would have liked to to a dragon and thought, if only I'd listened to my mum and dad, I wouldn't have gone all the way to that other side of the oak tree and got into a bit too much of an adventure, I think, for one day. So he tucked his orchid into his treasure chest, locked it up, put the key in his bedside table drawer. He thought maybe that's a safer place for it for just now. Pushed his treasure chest under the tree, under the bed, got into his bed and thought, enough adventure for today. Never again will I go past that great mighty oak tree. He closed his eyes and went to sleep. The end. Did you enjoy that one, girls? Yeah. So we had a whole series of different things that we put into our story there. We had a lesson in there as well. What do you think our lesson was? Don't go past don't go past the tree, so for the squirrel, not do what your mum and dad have told you not to do. It's always nice to put a lesson in there that maybe you think your ch children could do with hearing as well. So, by bringing all those things together, we created a story. We put some of our own sound effects in there to build an atmosphere. We thought of a problem and we thought how it could be solved, and we had a happy ending as well. Now, when you're making up a story, there's so many stories out there already, lots of which you can probably get away with doing a lot of copying and stealing and borrowing from different things. There's always a bit of losing something for your problem, or maybe a bit of getting lost, or going a bit too far and finding a problem there, or you can make up whatever you want. But never be scared to maybe steal a little bit from one story or another. The children all enjoy it just the same. So, I hope you enjoy making up your own stories, or even if you're just reading ones from books, hopefully you've got a few hints and tips now on how to make that particularly exciting for your kids to hear those stories and to just really enjoy that love of reading, to really broaden their horizons and give them those great bedtime experiences. Good night, Roxburn.